everybody, it's Wednesday the 4th of March today, which means that Empire Total War has been released and my copy of the game just arrived. As you can see, it's still in its original plastic wrapping. Now, I'm a massive fan of the Total War series. I first started playing it with Rome Total War and I loved that game so much that when Medieval 2 was released, I actually went and bought the Collector's Edition, which is something I'd never normally do. And then, of course, there was Medieval 2 Kingdoms, the expansion pack, which is probably one of the best expansion packs I've ever played. Also, on the advice of some Total War veterans, I went and bought the original Medieval Total War and the expansion pack Viking Invasion, both of which are excellent, so I'm psyched to try out Empire Total War. But whereas I've always had an interest in the time period portrayed by Medieval 2 Total War, and whereas Rome Total War got me interested in the time period it portrays, Empire Total War is set in the 18th century, which is a time period I just have no interest in whatsoever. So this game is going to have to do something pretty special to keep me entertained. Can it? Well, let's find out. So here we are at the main menu for Empire Total War. If we first of all go to single player, you'll see that we can play the battle tutorials, one on land and one on sea, the sea battles being a major new feature of Empire Total War. And then we have the Road to Independence campaign, which chronicles the foundation of the United States. And then of course we have the Grand Campaign itself, and there are several factions to choose from uh, in the beginning here. There's Great Britain, France, Austria, United Provinces, Spain, Prussia, Poland, Lithuania, Ottoman Empire, Russia, Sweden, the Martha Confederacy. And I chose to play as Great Britain, just because I thought, well, I'm already alienated by the time period, there's no point alienating myself further by playing as a foreign nation. There's only one word I can use to describe my immediate impressions of Empire Total War, and that word is overwhelming. Playing Medieval 2 Total War after coming from Rome Total War was easy. As soon as the game opened up, you knew exactly where you were and what you had to do. But when Empire opened up, I had no clue how to even begin. The enormity of the game hits you immediately, and one of the most obvious reasons for this is the fact that while previous Total War titles were restricted to one theatre of war, usually Europe, Empire has three theatres of war, Europe, America, and India. It becomes quickly apparent as you play that depending on the nation you chose, it might be possible to play through an entire campaign and never set foot on one of these continents. I wanted to experience the battles in this new Total War game as soon as possible, and it seemed that as Great Britain the quickest way I could do this was to focus on the land that I held in North America. Completely bewildered for the moment, however, I decided to simply end my turn and see what the AI did. First of all, Prussia offered me trade rights, but only if I gave them money for the privilege, so I quickly noted this insult down in my book of grudges and rejected that offer. After Prussia had condemned themselves to be my enemy forevermore, the Ottoman Empire also offered me a trade agreement, but this time, they were the ones giving me the money. Now that's the kind of agreement I can put my signature to. Unlike in previous Total War titles, you don't have to actually send a diplomat to the doors of other nations to open negotiations. You can simply open a window and conduct diplomacy with the nation of your choice. When my turn came around, I decided to focus on North America, and after stealing a trapper post, I decided to attack a band of Native Americans belonging to the Huron Confederacy. They weren't at war with me, but if slaughtering passive natives isn't what the Great British Empire should be doing in the 18th century, then I don't know what is. Now, I could see clearly what you can now, the fact that they outnumbered me by one unit, but I thought, well, that's hardly going to make a difference. After all, I'm the one with gunpowder. And so I went into battle, certain of my victory. The deployment phase is exactly the same as in past Total War titles, and since I only had two units, there wasn't much to do here. So I sent my troops on a slow march towards the Native American war bands. After all, there was no point tiring them out. I lined my troops up and opened fire on the enemy. But rather than frightening them like I had hoped, they instead responded by charging directly at me. Now, I know nothing about 18th century battle tactics, but I was pretty damn sure that it was a bad thing to be engaged in melee combat with a bunch of blood-mad tribesmen. So 
So while one of my units was being butchered, the other was exchanging fire with a group of bowmen in a futile attempt to change the course of battle. Inevitably though, my force was overwhelmed and my first battle in Empire Total War ended in defeat. And so my army fled into the deep woods. But you know, I was actually very pleased with that battle result because in Rome Total War and Medieval 2 Total War, the only time I ever lose a battle is if I'm ridiculously outnumbered. But judging by what I had just experienced in Empire Total War, it seemed like this game might actually provide something of a challenge. The AI actually made a clear attempt and succeeded in flanking me. And best of all, this was only on normal difficulty. My bloodlust having been quelled by that defeat, I turned my attention to the management of my empire and in doing so became so very thankful that I had chosen to do a first impressions video as opposed to a comprehensive review, because with this wealth of features it would have been impossible in the space of a week, never mind a day. I'll let you in on a little secret. The battles are not my favourite part of the Total War series. Maybe it's the megalomaniac in me, but I just can't get enough of fine tuning my empires, setting the taxes, overseeing construction, organising trade, spreading my religion, and just simply micromanaging every aspect I can. If you're paying attention to the options available on screen, you'll know that this may well be my dream game. I have heard that many features have been streamlined in Empire, but certainly Total War has never been this intricate. Another thing I like about this game is the victory conditions. Playing as Great Britain, I have to hold 25 regions by the year 1750, including New France, Georgia, the Leeward Islands, Gibraltar, Florida, Hindustan, and Scotland, England, and Ireland, which I already own. Maybe it's the time period, but this seems far more realistic than what could be achieved in past Total War games. Conquering all of Europe as Scotland, for example, always felt ridiculous. This is a computer game series, yes, but one with pretensions of being historical, and so a certain kind of balance is required. A drastic change from Empire's prequels is that rather than having technology forced upon you by the march of history, you can actually choose branches of research to focus on from three categories, which are military, industrial, and philosophy. This opens up enormous potential when it comes to customising your Empire, something lacking in previous Total War titles. Not that Empire is devoid of history. There are still reports of important events, such as you see here. In fact, everything I love about the Total War series, such as the generals and their traits, is present and correct. There are also some features that have made a comeback, such as new nations arising. The most anticipated feature that Empire brings to the table is the ability to take command of naval battles for the first time in the Total War series. I've never liked naval warfare and strategy games, perhaps because they are an extremely difficult thing for a developer to simulate. How is it in Empire? Well, gorgeous for one thing as you can see. The ships handle exactly as you'd expect, which is to say, slowly, but the detail in them is undeniably impressive, as of course is the conflict itself. You can choose from an array of cannon shots and even take control of them yourself. You can also board and take command of enemy ships. Perhaps it's just my general disinterest in maritime warfare, but I'm unsure of how lasting an appeal these battles will have. For me, it's all about the land battles. I will say, however, there is something soothing about watching a ship sink beneath the waves as its crew drown. The features I've talked about in this video alone would make for an awesome game, but the truth is I haven't even scratched the surface of what Empire has to offer. Epic is a word thrown around a lot when strategy games are discussed, but Empire Total War is a rare case of that description being entirely justified because it's absolutely true. The campaign map alone offers endless playability and is so chock full of features that my review of Empire will be an epic in itself. From what I've played, the battle map has the potential to be the most tactical yet in a Total War game. I never even had time to mention the fact that you can, for example, place units in buildings and behind all kinds of cover on the battlefield itself. By this point, I'd be naive if I didn't expect a Total War game to contain more bugs than the Temple of Doom on release. Indeed, the second DVD the game came on simply refused to work on my PC. It was the same for a friend of mine a few streets away with his copy, and an internet search reveals that we are far from alone. In the end, I had to download the files which wouldn't install from Steam, which, by the way, is required to activate the game. 
As for me, well, ever since I started making this video, I've only wanted one thing, to get back to playing the game. If the strategy genre is your cup of tea, and if your PC can handle it, I'd check it out. Thanks for watching.